so you syringe this on all the like exposed pads on the circuit board, and the stuff is like this gooey, it's like this gooey lead stuff, and it's kind of sticky, and so you get the components and you like, place them on all the like, lead goo. But of course, you need to solder it. Um, there's two schools of thought on this. Um, I went with the frying pan school of thought. Um, some people use toaster ovens, but you actually put it in a, a slow <laughs> oven. Actually, it actually worked. It's like super ghetto, but I was like, I cannot believe it actually worked. Uh, so that's how I made the hard work. Um, because then you just connected a bunch of things, right? So they don't necessarily do anything yet. Um, to do that, of course, you have to add a, a tiny computer. Um, the tiny computer in this project has various responsibilities, so things like detecting the button presses, uh, blinking the lights, um, having these chats with this other tiny computer about, you know, there's incoming calls, the inventor calls, stuff like that. Um, so this, this is a tiny computer that I used that's actually related to a lot of the um, Arduino stuff. Um, so I'm gonna point out a couple of cool things. Uh, it's eight dollars in, in quantities of one. Uh, if you buy a thousand, it's only four dollars. <laughs> I run it at 11 megahertz, uh, which is, is actually when you're working with physical stuff, it's a different relationship. It's 11 million things a second, which is a lot. It's a lot of things, right? Like, uh, so it sounds slow in computer world, but then if you start thinking about like, well, I need to flip these lights on and off, you're like, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Bytes of program space, which is enough room for about one, one and a half gigs. <laughs> uh, so, this is a tiny computer that I use. Um, of course, it's real small. There's no operating system, so there's no threads. There's no garbage collection unless you write your own garbage collector. Um, you can't really call sleep because, you know, nothing else will happen. <laughs> but you're not going to have callbacks or anything. So, um, it's kind of a hostile, hostile environment. So, before I started programming, I sort of planned all this stuff out using um, state charts. This is a picture of my um, notebook. And it's basically kind of thinking through, sort of like if you're familiar with uh, finite state machine diagrams, very similar kind of thing. Um, just planning out, okay, like the phone is idle, and then maybe an incoming call happens, so it'll transition into this like ringing state, where like, the light is going to blink, and then you know if, if I press a button, it's going to answer the call or, or whatever. Um, so this is how I kind of plan everything out. There's a great book that I found um, about writing out stuff. So if you're interested in doing this, I'd highly recommend picking up this book. Of course, once you write the software, you don't really have a phone. Um, what you have is this thing, and this is just a machine that'll get you thrown out of an airport. <laughs> Put this in like a box, right? So that's the last part of my talk, which is industrial design stuff. Um, you know, and again, I started by just kind of sketching out some stuff that I wanted in a phone, and um, I don't actually have like woodworking skills or anything like that. So I was like, okay, I'm going to keep this simple, and I decided to have basically like a little box um, that would be made out of like walnut, and then wrap a piece of leather on top of that, and you kind of touch the buttons and stuff through the leather. So. To actually um, draw that out, I use this uh, parametric design software. And the way this works is actually really cool. You draw like a 2D sketch, and then you'll like extrude that sketch to make a 3D object, and then you can pick a new face on that 3D object, draw a new 2D, like, 2D sketch on that face, and then you can extrude that again or cut that again. And so you kind of go through this process of sketching and then building out features until you make a full uh, 3D model of what you want. This stuff is really cool. Um, it was the first time I played with this, but it really makes sort of like Emacs and Vim with, with really like kids' toys, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I, I made this uh, model, um, but you know, it's just a model on a computer. I actually need to make this thing. Uh, but you know, before anyone says 3D printer, right? I want to make this out of wood, uh, which you can't print. Uh, if, 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 this is, if there's a, any point in this project where I went to. Uh, to Full on crazy town. Um, it would be here because this is when I bought a um, CNC. Uh, <laughs> basically, like a robot drill. I guess the speaker's not plugged in, but it, it sounds exactly like what you think. It's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. Um, so yeah, so this guy weighs a couple hundred pounds, and uh, supposedly it's accurate to like six microns, which is insane. And also hilarious because I'm working in wood. So. <laughs> uh -huh. well, the best part about this machine, though, is that it came with a hat. <laughs> And there's this whole other world that's really cool um, about CAM software, about how you actually move this tool around to like rip out the different parts of material. And you know, if you have different sizes of tools, there's different constraints about the stuff you can do. Um, it took me a while to, to sort of figure this stuff out. Um, so a lot of, lots of different kinds of 
wood and I broke some of these really expensive drill bits. Uh, but then eventually I like made a little um, model of my thing. This is out of like MDF, which has like nasty wood dust, which is why I'm wearing this goofy outfit. Um, but then I sort of milled out my thing and then, you know, I, I was working with MDF because it's cheap and then I moved on and started working with uh, bamboo and uh, walnut. And then I think last week, this was like basically to the point where I was at, uh, but thanks to the motivational power of uh, conference talks, <laughs> managed to, to laser print and or like laser cut the surface and do some stuff out of walnut. So if you guys want to see this, you can come grab me later. And I have like, you know, other busted pieces and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, right, but I'm, I'm about uh, 350 hours into this project. <laughs> which, uh, so according to Malcolm Gladwell, that makes me a 3.5% uh, expert <laughs> practitional cell phones. Um, <laughs> From this position of authority, I want to leave you all with one thing, um, which is that you want know, make, making stuff is hard. Making stuff is really hard, and it's been really cool learning about all these different things. Because like now, out in the world, I kind of look at stuff in a different way. You know, like how do they make this thing? You know, how do they make this do that or whatever? Um, and it's easy to kind of get lost in the weeds when you're trying to make stuff, right? There's like all this stuff here, and stuff is hard, and you know, things things break, and pieces of wood fly out of machines really fast and stuff. Um, <laughs> but you know, when you're out and when you're deep and, and lost in the weeds, the one thing I, I want to remind you guys to do is to just like celebrate your victories, right? So occasionally try and step back and you know look around and, and just be pleased with yourself. I was so pleased when like I made those lights blink. I was like, this is the best thing ever. Like when I got this machine and I used it to cut like a larger piece of wood into like three smaller pieces of wood. And I was like, awesome. So I, made, you know, I, I want everyone here to like. Try and go make something crazy and like reach really far, but like when you do that, when you get lost in the weeds, make sure you like take time to step back and uh, you know pat yourself with that. Thanks.